Welcome to Gold Derby. I'm senior editor Denton Davidson here with Wayne Lewis, the home cook from Columbus, Ohio, who finished in fifth place on MasterChef season 13, representing the Midwest in the United States of America. Wayne, what a run. You came into this competition as the oldest to make the top 20. You had a very successful career that had nothing to do with cooking. What made you take this leap at this point in your life? Well, I will say, you know, unlike a lot of the contestants this season, I was actually a super fan of this show. Um, I mean, I've been watching it religiously most seasons more than once. And so um, about two years ago, I, I kind of wanted to apply. I was like, you know, I've, I've been cooking for over 20 years. I think I'm pretty decent. Um, I can do this, right? And uh, so I went to apply, but I found out quickly they were having the legend season, or uh, I'm sorry, the uh, back to win. So they brought back former contestants that year. So I had to wait a year. And in that year, I kind of practiced a little bit. And as soon as the application went live, like last, I think it was September of last year, I applied like that day. And so it's been like a year of my life, this MasterChef experience. So it's been pretty wild. And I thought, you know what? You know, no matter what I do in food, uh, I have a successful business. Why not try something new? And uh, food is definitely my passion. Hopefully that came through on the show. It definitely did. And you had a lot of successes that you can be proud of this season from getting the white apron to winning a few challenges. What, what was the highlight for you when you look back at the season? Well, I mean, I have two highlights. You know, my first goal there, and I said this on the show many times and I meant it, was really getting a white apron. I thought, you know, that was just this, huge milestone uh, because you know, so many thousands of people apply online and then you've got just all these people in LA vying to be on the show. So to even have a chance to cook for these judges was really special and to get four yeses was amazing. So, you know, that was just a huge, huge high point for me. And then my other high point was probably, uh, probably the episode I haven't seen yet. <laughs> if I can say that. And that's the restaurant takeover. I'm a huge Hell's Kitchen fan. So getting thrown into that meat grinder and winning and, uh, you know, having Gordon Ramsay say that in the 13 years, it was probably the best performance he's ever seen in a kitchen takeover. That was pretty like pinch me moment for sure. Let's talk about this Hell's Kitchen takeover for a minute, because that looked extremely daunting and stressful to me. You yeah. captained the blue team to a win, which was Kennedy, Reagan, and yourself. Right. What was that day like with the three of you serving so many diners in Gordon's kitchen, and he's screaming at you, and there's all this pressure? What, right. what was the day like for you? So, you know, that day, I think when viewers have to put into context what our days are like. And so that day, you know, started, I don't know it. 4.30 or 5 a.m., right? I mean, you've got these intros, you've got all the shooting, all this preparation. Um, and so by the time we get into the kitchen, we are both super exhilarated and also a little mentally smoked. So I think, I don't know if they plan it that way, but it just makes the challenge extra harder. And, uh, you know, serving a full dining room like that, none of us didn't, we didn't have that kind of experience. Uh, we hadn't worked lines. So... You know, my goal was just to kind of, you know, break each task down into something executable by each person. And um, that's really what we did. And I tried to keep some organization up front. But yeah, it was absolute chaos. And then you've got the other team going right next to you. So you can hear what's going on there. You're getting yelled at. They're getting yelled at. You're trying to figure out, like, are we doing well? Are we not doing well? Um, it was probably as exciting for us to do as it is for the viewers to watch. Could you tell in the moment while you're cooking, like, oh, I'm we're doing better than this team? Or are you so in it that you just really don't know until the, it's over? I felt that we were doing better uh, based on, you know, I was working the past. So I was able to see really bird's eye view of what was going on right in my uh, right to my right. So I had a good idea that we were doing better than them. But look, this is the MasterChef kitchen and you just don't know how you're going to be judged by the professionals like Gordon, Joe, and, and our own. So at the end of the day, when you're standing up there at the end, you may feel good, but there was a part of you that just doesn't know. Yeah. And following that Hell's Kitchen takeover, the top five go back to the MasterChef kitchen and you're tasked with this stuffed pasta dish. And this is what sent you home. You had a saffron flavored pasta, uh, which Joe explained was probably the most difficult. What for you was the most dif difficult part of that challenge? And where did things go wrong for you, do you think? Well, Going into that challenge, I knew I was going home that challenge. I had, I, 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 I just knew it. And part of it was just the, 
you know, I put my TV producer hat on and the demographics of me and Grant, both from the Midwest, both guys, I don't think we're both going to the finale. And when I heard it was pasta, that's Grant's sweet spot. He's great at pasta. He's been doing it all season. He got in on pasta. He won on pasta. So I kind of said it in my head that like, I'm probably going home. That didn't help me for sure. Uh, but when it came to the sauce, the sauce is what did me in or lack of a sauce, I guess, is what, what Joe said, an incomplete dish. Um, the ravioli was, I got, I got high marks on the actual ravioli. Um, but I was mentally, emotionally, just absolutely smoked after that Hell's Kitchen takeover. I mean, that was, that was really a lot. So, um, but Hey, I don't have any regrets. Um, I, I think that if I had to do it all over again, I would have just made a, you know, a, a burr rouge sauce or something like that. And it might've been interesting. I don't know, but, uh, Kennedy, she, I know, had a little bit tougher time that episode, but she's a great cook. Um, she put out consistently amazing things all season. So I wasn't surprised at all to see her in the finale. I think some people thought you entered MasterChef a little cocky uh, based on just the early episodes and maybe some of the editing. But the experience seemed to really humble you. And I but I liked watching you because I like it when people are really competitive and want to win. How yeah. much has the experience changed you as a person and as a cook? Yeah. Well, I will say this. Look, I'm a confident person and I'm only confident because I've had plenty of failures in life and I've built some successes on top of those. So I think, you know, at my age, when you've done those things for 20 and 30 years, especially in business, I mean, you have confidence. And I understand that on TV, sometimes confidence can come across um, as cocky or arrogant. And I'll say, look, they told us from the very beginning, like, be confident cook with confidence. And I did. And I think that my actual confidence kind of got sandwiched on top of that TV confidence. And it came across a little, a little much at, at some times, but um, it's definitely humbling cooking in that kitchen because, you know, a, it's a new place. It's a strange place. You don't know what you're going to be cooking from day to day. And the other cooks are really good too. So, um, you know, it's a fine line to try to stay confident and comp uh, uh, confident and competitive and still kind of uh, try to learn as much as you can. And I put my learning cap on pretty quick after the risotto episode, uh, which was like the first main episode where I was uh, dinged for my risotto that was all wrong, uh, even though they never told me exactly what was wrong with it. Uh, but after that, I decided, you know what, I'm going to I'm gonna really just kind of keep my mouth shut, learn as much as I can, put out the best dishes I can. And hopefully I did that. It's funny because I interviewed Joe before the season premiered and I said, why do people keep making risotto? I was like, it's the death of everyone. And he's like, I don't know. He's like, he's like, but it, he's like, it hurts him more than it helps him most times. But um, it's fascinating to watch all these people making risotto. Um, when you oh, think look, you're not, hold on, you're not supposed to make Mexican for a roan either. Right? right. And, you know, and I did a Mexican surf and turf and won that challenge. So, uh, you know, Look, I, I think like making risotto has also almost become like a cliche for the show. You don't do it. And I went in there. I'm going to swing for the fences from the first episode and uh, almost struck out, but uh, fortunately stayed alive. Was there anything that you would have loved to have cooked or shown the judges that the challenge just didn't line up? Um, so you weren't able to necessarily show a certain skill or a specific dish that you know, know would have just knocked them out? Uh, yeah, I, I really wish I'd been in the finale and had a chance to cook. Well, I had the chance to cook a three course meal, something that yeah. I fully composed, I fully thought through and executed. So, you know, that's my, my biggest regret is not getting a chance to do that because I think that would have shown my true cooking style, uh, the most clearly because being from the Midwest, you know, we have to kind of grab, uh, from different cooking styles from around and ingredients, especially, right? Because look, in the wintertime, we really don't have many native ingredients freshly available to us. So, you know, I'm comfortable cooking. I, I think I did um, I did jerk chicken. I did uh, uh, Southern uh, catfish. I did uh, a Mediterranean dish I was in the top with with scallops. So I, I feel like I showed some good variety, but I really, really wanted to show a classic, super elevated Midwestern um dinner menu for for the finale so i wish i'd gotten to do that yeah um we've mentioned that you have been a businessman you've mentioned your failures and then successes i think that's um common between all entrepreneurs that i've met is that there's been failures that then lead to your 
big biggest success. Right. But you say you've been cooking for 20 years. What led to that passion? What like what started you on that route and then yeah. sort of built that love for food inside of you? Uh, I'm from Rochester, New York, and we do not have, please forgive me, Rochester friends. We don't have a really rich culinary history up there. We've got, you know, some Italian food and whatnot, but we're not known for our cuisine. We're known for our garbage plates. I don't know if you know what that is, but uh, leave that for another day. Um, I went to LSU for college in Baton Rouge. And when I moved down south, it was like game on for food for me. Um, just the the flavors, the ingredients, the cooking styles, I was just hooked by. So I got into food right away. I bought like my first cookbook was an Emerald cookbook, of course, an icon there. I'm still cooking with Emerald Ware. That's probably 25 years old uh, by Pots and Pans. And uh, yeah, I got hooked back back then. And then when I moved up to Ohio, I kind of brought some of that Southern cooking with me got to travel a good bit and just, I'm an experimenter. Um, I'm very self-taught, never been to culinary school or classes, like maybe some of the others. Um, and so I, you know, I love that about food that you can really, really explore the world um, through food. I love that. So what's next for you? Are you continuing the food journey? Is it something you want to pursue as a career now? Let fans know how they can follow you and, and what's next for, for yeah, what? absolutely. Um, Look, I'm 51, about to turn, actually, no, wait, I just turned 52. I take that back, shoot. Um, see, I'm trying to forget that already. And um, um, I look, I'm not going to go hop behind the line of a restaurant <laughs> here, probably at my age. That's not going to happen. You know, having a bed and breakfast someday is probably my retirement dream. Um, but I am on Instagram at 60 Minute Chef. Um, I've got a website with lots of recipes. I'm just really sharing my love for food and recipes with people. Um, I also started this t-shirt brand I'm wearing. Extra spicy is one of them. Uh, that's at kitchenvibes.us. You can also get the link through my Instagram. And I've got some culinary themed conversation starter shirts and uh, they've been doing pretty decent. So I'm pretty happy about that. But um, for me, this was a, man, a once in a lifetime experience. I, I have lots of stories to tell uh, for the rest of my life. So for that, I'm super grateful to Fox and the producers for having me on. Well, Wayne, congratulations again on making the top five. It was <laughs> Really fun to watch you and your journey throughout the season. And thanks for chatting with Gold Derby today. Thank you. I appreciate it. Take care. 